Hello. Well, after almost two years since I cut this floor, then poured the pad, I've got my boring mill up and running, finally. Um, there's still a little bit to do to it. Um, I've got a set of digital readouts on order for it uh, that are a couple of weeks away, and of course it'll take me a bit of time to install them. I got, I'm gonna do all four axes, so there's four scales to install and a, two heads to install. Um, and I have to build a coolant system for it. But other than that, it's, it's fully functional, finally. I'm doing my first actual revenue paying job on it. I have a job where I have to drill out a bunch of these steel castings that have a bit of a ribbed hole in them. They need them changed to just be a smooth bore. And then I have to drill out these uh, pin holes. These parts sort of uh, are held together with a couple of longer pins. So it's a drilling job, um, but uh, it's my very first one. The machine goes from being a net user of money and time to a, hopefully a net provider of money at least. Um, it's been a pretty hard push here the last three months or so. I've worked on this pretty steady. Um, got the table back on, the saddle and table back on, and then started leveling it. Um, my first round of leveling, I wasn't worrying about the column because I didn't have an accurate square to use to check the squareness of the column to the table. And so I just worried about getting the bed level, um, crossways, no twist, and long ways to make sure there was no humps or anything in it. Um, and then align the uh, outriggers so that they're parallel to the bed, and then the last thing is you drop the wheels there, the three cam follower bearings that ride on the outriggers, you drop those down and have them take some load. So that that took a while and I got it really good. Um, I then discovered uh, the Giddings and Lewis handbook on vintagemachinery.org, downloaded it and it had a whole section on alignments. I'd previously been using an Indian standard I'd found uh, like a standard from India on uh, boring mills. It was the only thing I could find before that. Um, and the GNL manual actually had a section on uh, what they call method of checking squares. And the idea is you can take a square that isn't perfectly square and you can check it using the boring mill and it will tell you how much the square is out and how much your column is leaning. So this machine came with these two angle plates. Um, and I didn't know if they were all that square or not. Uh, so I picked one and I mounted on the table and I used GNL's method and found out that it's about six and a half to seven thou out of square. Um, but that doesn't matter when you use their method, supposedly. You can still use it to check the squareness of the column. And uh, so I sort of did a round two of alignments where I then attempted to square the column to the table, which then resulted in the whole bed having to be redone. So it ended up being like another full week of tweaking, jacking screws, etc. But having done that and carried out um, quite a few of the alignment checks that are in both the Indian and the GNL standard. Um, I, I didn't do every single one, but I, I did most of them. I, I am convinced more than ever that this machine was rebuilt. I've mentioned that in my previous videos, but um, I'm convinced this thing was, uh, at least the slideways were redone and it didn't see much use after that because I'm getting um, like a lot of the alignment checks I did were well within new machine tolerance. Um, so that, that's been really, really making me happy after dealing with the, what was in the headstock and the other gearboxes and just the general filthy condition of the machine to spend all that time fixing and cleaning stuff and then discover that the ways are, you know, the machine's just about like a new machine is, is really nice. Um, I did uh, uh, a couple of the alignment checks 
uh, that I did is um, like, well, two of them, I use the same trammel bar. You move the, the head halfway up the column and you lock it in place. And then you bolt a large bar onto the milling spindle. You put a dial indicator on the end of it. And then what you can do is you can sweep up and touch the, the face of the way and then come down and touch the face of the way down near the bottom. And what that does is it tells you how square your spindle is to the column, whether the headstock is leaning at all. Uh, it's that check that determines how much um, milling mismatch you'll get when you're, say, going with a face mill and you're making multiple horizontal passes. It tells you whether you're gonna get a sawtooth effect or not. Um, I was within the tolerance for a new machine. Uh, I can't remember the numbers offhand, but I was, I was within the tolerance. Um, so that's good. Um, then with the same trammel bar, you lower the head down and then you measure, um, uh, it's covered now with the weight covers, but you essentially measure the front edge of the master way for the table. And that test shows you how square the spindle is to the um, travel of the table across the bed. Uh, the tolerance on that is, um, I, I believe, well, for the diameter I was sweeping, which was about 72 inches, it turned out, the tolerance worked out to, you would have been allowed just under three thou in 72 inches. I got zero. On a one thou indicator, the needle did not move off of zero. And I was highly suspect of that. And I redid that measurement four or five times. And every single time it came out exactly the same zero. So apparently the spindle on this machine is essentially for all intents and purposes, perfectly square to the travel of the table. And I, I just don't think you could get that on a 50 year old machine that's had a lot of use. Um, I did some other uh, checks where you uh, extend the spindle out and mount a dial indicator on the table the base on the table and put the indicator on the top and then the side of the spindle to check if the spindle is parallel to the table travel this way. Uh, and then you also check it to determine if it's parallel this way, if, if the spindle's pointing off one way or the other. Um, again, both checks showed that it was within the allowable tolerance for a new machine. Um, the levelness of the bed, which you know maybe is an indication of machine wear, it's more how much time you want to spend leveling the bed. Um, I've got uh, crossways for twist to about uh, less than half of new machine tolerance, and for this way for up and down, I am right at the edge of um, new machine tolerance. Uh, one of the reasons I couldn't get it absolutely perfect was when I the second time around when I tried squaring the column to the table it's inevitable that when you try and move the column you affect the bed and I chased my tail around for several days um, trying to squeeze out the last little bit of alignment of the column to the tabletop and I just could not get the bed the, the bed is right at the edge I couldn't get it uh, any better than what it was and still have the column be pretty much where it needs to be. Column squareness is out slightly. Um, the way I was doing it, I was allowed in the GNL standard um, a thou and seven tenths over the distance I was measuring and I was about a thou and nine tenths. So I'm very, very close. Again, the machine is, uh, it's well over 50 years old. So I think I should be pretty happy with those results. Um, yeah, so I will uh, attempt to take a bit of footage here while I'm drilling this part out. And, um, but other than putting the readouts on and putting a coolant system in, it is uh, all done, it's ready to go. So what I'm doing here is I'm I'm uh, setting up to drill through there. Um, I've got a drill bit in right now that pretty much just fits through the hole. Um, it 
it fits through the existing hole. So I've used that to line up. Uh, it doesn't perfectly fit through and the hole isn't perfectly round or anything like that. So what I do is I'll run this one through first and then I'll take it out and I'll put the actual size of drill bit I want for the finished hole size. This might be my favorite feature of this whole machine. Power draw bar. It makes changeover so much nicer than a manual draw bar like the one I have on my horizontal mill. It's got a 50 taper with a one inch draw bar. And then you gotta walk around to the side of the machine and put it in low gear so it doesn't turn. And grab a big wrench, reach over your head, break it loose, back it out by hand while you hold the fairly heavy 50 taper tool. This just makes it so much easier. Now I got the drill bit that's the correct size. Yeah, you pretty much need two hands to get it started. Oh, there we go. And that's her. Uh, I haven't moved anything, so the alignment should still be good. Select three, which is feed on the spindle. And press the feed button.
there, it's drilled to size. Um, it's hard with this machine without um, readouts on it to know where your drill bit is, other than you can look in the hole, I guess. But um, this machine had the old uh, optical system using rulers, and that was all ripped off years ago, long before I got it, and uh, digital readouts were put on it. But by the time I got it, those digital readouts were all buggered up. So I've got new ones coming. I mentioned that earlier. Um, the one thing I can measure is the spindle travel. There's uh, this coarse dial here. You can zero it. And then you have uh, these readings here. And depending whether you pick coarse or fine on the um, feeds, uh, it, it gives you a, a distance. It's in, um, I don't know, some unknown measuring system. Um, not bananas, kiwis maybe. I hear they like it on the east coast of Australia anyways. Here we prefer the other one. So anyways, um, that's the first job. I have to drill out the small holes as well. Um, I may, may include that as well.